Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. This video is actually for the Hero Arts October My Monthly Hero Kit release. This is the kit. This is pretty much all I'm using today. Though, all of these things will apply to any kind of scene cards you want to do. So frequently, I don't show my whole process when I'm building a scene because there's so much with the Copa coloring and everything else. So today I decided to split this card into two videos to kind of show you my whole process in case you would like to start making scenes as well. I always do a practice piece. That's what you see here. I'm stamping actually in Distress Inks. The reason I'm stamping in Distress Inks is because they're super easy to clean up. And here's reason number one why I have to do the practice pieces. So I wanted to use all the little ice skaters, but I didn't realize that this little ice skater is much bigger than the other ice skaters. And if I had stamped her where I originally wanted to, which was kind of in the background, she would look like crazy giant ice skater. She's not a crazy giant ice skater, so I had to put her more toward the front, so that way, perspective-wise, um, anything that's closer to you appears bigger. At first, I thought I was going to do, um, it has like this tiny little um, pond, like this little ice skating pond rink in it, and so I was like, well, I'll just use that and I'll stamp um, two of them, and then that way um, I can connect them in the middle. I'll just wipe one of the inks off and I'll connect them in the middle. But then when I held up this other little ice skater, I realized it didn't go back far enough. It wasn't wide enough for me to include all of my skaters, including the one that was behind the tree. So now here, again, this is why we do the practice pieces. I'm trying to find a place to put her because I stamped the first girl up front way too far out. She's just, she's just way too far up, like way too far over by the tree. So I started over again. And this is, like, I'm just using, um, you can see the my Simon Says Stamp grid paper on the back there. Um, I just use the back of them. Like, as they get dirty, I just cut them up into pieces and use the back of them. Here, so now I figured out my placement for the girl in the back. Um, now I'm figuring out my placement for the girl in the front. I restamped my little couple up front. I wanted to add a bench and some lamps that are also included in the set. So I'm just stamping those down. You'll notice I'm not masking anything. I do stamp the different elements in different colors. Um, so that way I can kind of see them individually instead of just stamping like black on black on black on black. Um, and then I am drawing in what will be my pond since I'm kind of freehanding it. So I'm just going to keep that over to the left hand side and then I'll be able to refer to it. You could also use it as a template. I... Um, like for your stamps, if you're using a stamp positioner, I choose not to do that. So stamping masking tip number two, use your masks. If you're creating a one layer scene, you're already going to have masks. So don't be afraid to put them down and use them for placement. So in order to get my couple in the right um, section, I just put my tree mask down since that is my focal point so that I could get their placement correctly. I'm stamping an intense black ink from Hero Arts. This is Copic Safe because you know, you know, I'm going to be doing the Copic coloring. I cannot help myself. Can't do it. I stamped most of my images down twice uh, because this was the first time I was stamping them and I am using Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock. So when you're stamping a scene, you stamp back, no, front to back. So whatever, <laughs> whatever is in the front, you stamp first and then you mask it and you work your way towards the back of the scene. So pretty much the last things I'm going to stamp are going to be um, the bench that's in the back and the ice skater that's furthest from the front. So now that I have all of those, I, the little boy and little girl stamped, I masked them. I'm going to put my tree back in place because I need to um, get my ornaments and my tree topper in place. So I'm using this to kind of place where they're going to be on the tree. Um, and then you'll see I have another little trick for this, um, either or. So this one I use the mask and that's totally fine. You can absolutely use the mask to place those things. Just be careful anytime you're putting, I'm using Eclipse masking paper by the way. Anytime you're putting masks on top of other masks, we need to be aware. I'm going to stamp these down and then put their masks in place um, so that I'm not, you know, stamping the tree right over the ornaments and then the whole thing was pointless. But the other way that you can do this kind of trick, so see if I put the mask over top of it now, I won't be able to see where the other ornaments are, so I won't be able to tell for placement. 
Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, ink on three, which is a no line coloring ink. You could do this with any light colored ink. It doesn't have to be this one. This is just, I have this one, so I'm going to use it. Um, but you could use a light color distress ink. Uh, we're going to stamp right over top of it again in black, so it doesn't matter. It's just going to give us like a shadow outline for where the rest of the ornaments are going to go. So now I'm switching Misty's. I was using the mini Misty. I'm switching over to the big Misty so I don't have to move my tree. I'm going to put the next round of ornaments where I want them to be. And then also my little skater on the right hand side who's going to be hanging over the edge. I'm going to get her too because she won't fit in the mini Misty. Um, yeah, she just, the card is just too wide to have her hanging over the edge. Um, so I'm going to stamp those down. And then I'm going to mask all of those as well. So right now it kind of just looks like I have ornaments that are just floating in the air. That's not true. We're finally to the point where I'm going to stamp the tree. I wanted to make sure that everything was lined up. That's why I picked my Misty back up so you didn't have to look at the back of my head. Um, and then I'm going to stamp my tree down finally. And um, you can see here, remember I told you check those masks. Um, I picked up two of my masks and I didn't realize it. So two of the masks that were covering up my ornaments, I actually picked up and was putting ink on. Um, so I did cut two new masks because I had put black ink just all over everything, everywhere, all over the things. Um, and so I am going to put those in place and then go ahead and stamp my tree just like I had originally intended to. The other thing of note is because I have a tree topper, you saw me use a baby wipe to wipe off just the top of the tree. Um, that's because I don't want a bunch of greenery sticking out from behind my star. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, once my tree is stamped down, I'm going to put the mask in place for this. As far as cutting your masks, um, basically with masks, know what you need. Okay, know when it's okay to just leave it. Now, I'm doing a distress ink background, so most of my items need masks. If you were just stamping this and then completely covering it with Copics, a lot of them wouldn't. And when I say know what you need, I'm going to stamp this bench. But when I trimmed the mask for the bench, I didn't trim all around those little teeny tiny um, wrought iron handles. I didn't need to. It wasn't, it just wasn't necessary. So I didn't because I don't want to drive myself crazy. Same thing with the um, lamps here. I don't need to mask the whole lamp. The, the, I'm stamping it in black. The only thing I need to mask is the little um, flame part of it. So that's all I masked. Um, there'll be other times where maybe you'll only need to mask like half of a person's body or something. Don't stress out about like cutting out all of these masks if you don't need them. I, like I said, I like to do the Distress Ink background. When I can have my Copic backgrounds look as blended as Distress Ink backgrounds do, um, I'll be happy to switch. But in the meantime, um, they don't, they don't, they just don't, they don't look that good. And um, I save a bunch on Copic Ink. So that's that. So I'm going to stamp this one down now and then um, we're going to start working on the coloring of the background. So there, like I said, two-part video. This is going to be pretty much just the, the masking of the background. Um, and then the second one will be the coloring because I kind of had a thing going on there too. Um, but there are some things I also want to hit up real quick, um, which is we talked about the, the, um, the doing the lives. And it seems like the most popular vote is going to be YouTube Live. Now, I think I can share my YouTube Live to Facebook, like so that you can click on that stream. I'm not positive. I will look into that. And Thursday afternoons um, seem to be the best kind of time frame um, for me, but several of you said evenings. And when I did my periscopes, I did them in the evening. So here's my game plan right now. I'm going to do one in the afternoon and see how that goes. And then I'm going to do one on a Thursday evening and see how that goes. I am Eastern Standard Time. Um, well, I think te right, technically right now we're still Eastern Daylight Time. But it ain't going to be, it's going to be Eastern Standard Time here in just a minute, which makes me sad. Let's all, you know, have a moment of silence for summer. Anyway, um, so I've cut my pond out and the masking paper that I had cut, 
um, was not quite long enough. That was my bad. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to finagle it a little bit. Uh, it's fine. You want to keep both pieces though. You want to keep your actual pond and then the piece up, um, up at the top because that's going to be where your ground is and you'll need that for masking. Here's where I'm kind of like rigging it a little bit so I don't have to cut a completely new pond. I'm just going to put another piece of paper there and then the way the paper went on was crooked. Yeah, I know. This was just like a hot mess. It was such a hot mess. Um, so I'm also very quickly going to um, tell you, start to tell you my um, the story about my maintenance people and then I will tell you the rest of the maintenance people story on the next video because I ain't got time. I, I just don't. Um, so anyway, um, I moved into a rental. We talked about this. I moved into a rental and the rental, you pretty much don't do anything. You have just maintenance crews. And um, so then you submit a ticket and then they let you know. When I first moved in here, there was a wet spot in my hallway floor and I put in a ticket for it. Then um, it was like two weeks till they got back to me and the spot kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So finally they get back to me and the carpet is just completely saturated and the wall looks like it's starting to bubble a little bit. So I thought it was the hot water tank that was leaking. They send me out a maintenance guy. The maintenance guy comes out and looks at it. This is just like story number one in a whole stream of maintenance men stories. But anyway, so he comes out and looks at it. He says, I think it is the pump for your air conditioner. Apparently the extra moisture from your air conditioner goes into a pump um, so that it gets rid of the water and mine was only working sometimes. So he replaces, well, he tells me he's got to go to Home Depot and to get a new pump. So he does that. When he comes back, <laughs> when he comes back, um, he says, do you have a glass with some ice in it? And I say, yes, I do. I mean, I'm, I'm a good host. I'm hospitable, right? So I pull a glass out of the sink and he was like, you don't, you don't have a plastic cup? And I was like, I do, no, sir, I do not have a plastic cup. And my son had um, just finished drinking some, like, a chocolate milk out of a, like, plastic cup um, that was, he had just set on the countertop. And he's like, well, what about that one? And I was like, oh, oh, okay, like, if you want my kid's old Bob Evans cup, like, I'm okay. That's strange, but sure, I'm, I'm game. So I stand at the sink and I wash out the Bob Evans cup. And then I put some ice in it and I go to hand it to him. And he was like, oh, her drink got warm. And I'm like, her, her, her who? We're, it's just me and you here. I'm the only her and I'm not thirsty. So he's like, oh no, she, she's out in the car. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, if you want to just, I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll just take her. I'll take her the plastic cup then. Oh, okay. Right. So anyway, I did my sky and then I flipped it. Um, I kept my pond in place and then I'm using some Distress Oxide Shaded Lilac. The reason I'm using the oxide is because it goes down easier and um, I'm lazy. So anyway, so I go outside and there's like a, I don't know, it was like a Grand Prix or something. And this woman is like seat laid back in the passenger seat with all of the windows down, just like out, just out. And I'm like, um, excuse, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, excuse me. And she's like, out. So I, a little louder, ma'am, ma ma'am. And she's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. She's like totally groggy. And all I could think is like, did you bring, did you like that scene in Pulp Fiction? You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Um, I was like, oh, okay. Like, are you, are you okay? And she was like, oh, just, it's just warm. And I'm like, oh, all right. Well, he said you needed some ice cup and ice in a cup. She was like, thank you so much. And she was like, super polite. So then I come back in and he's like, oh, you know, pump's all good. You're good to go, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, thank you. But then he forgot to turn my breaker back on and then the pump didn't work at all. So we will continue from the pump didn't work at all at the next one along with the coloring. So I will see you over there. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Bye.